<laughs> it. Hey, Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. This is Smart mm -hmm. Business Moves. Hey, Liz, how are you? Hey, Tom, I'm well. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. All right. Um, guess who's not here today? <laughs> I'm so sad. Did you find out why? Um, schedule conflict. It was like one of those things that happens all the time. Um, yeah. He had another commitment that his wife hadn't told him about. Oh. He learned about it this morning. Oh. And, uh, he wants to reschedule. He'll be available in a couple of weeks. So um, we'll uh, we'll get back on it in a couple of weeks. But we've got uh, we're gonna we're gonna basically fill in in his absence and talk a little bit more about an annual planning process and I guess really piggyback on some of the work that uh, that we were were sharing yesterday. All right. I also sent you that PowerPoint slide, Tom. You did Just one slide. Yeah, I sent it as a as a an image. Awesome. Thank you, Quick Up. All right. So uh, let's see. But tomorrow, um, we are still going to be talking about um, KPI tracking, getting ready for the new year. And we're going to be talking about how to start moving some of these levers or levers, depending on where you're from, who you are, which I'm excited about. Um, okay, good. I'm glad you found it. <laughs> it looked funny floating there on yeah. us. Hey, Marlo. I love your picture, Marlo. All your pictures. They're so beautiful. Your family looks so Christmassy. And great pictures. Uh, yep. So tomorrow, KPIs. Yay. More that. And then what are we doing next week, Tom? We're going to give everybody uh, the week off for Christmas. That's what we're going to do because, Yay. you know, we need it. You know, as the holidays coming up, you need to, to kind of you know get some rest and refocus because we're going to be back the following Monday. What is that? The 28th, I believe. Uh, fifth is Friday. Yep. 28th. And we're going to be, we're going to be bringing it. So you need to get ready because we're going to start working hard starting the 28th, getting ready for the new year. Hey, Leslie, yep. Marlo. Um, let's see, what do we got? Oh yeah, tomorrow we're, we're going to be uh, picking up on the profit. We're going to be talking about things that we can do to reduce our cost of goods sold or the proxy that we use for that, the, uh, the payroll to revenue. So oh, it's like you were not listening to me at all while you were off doing your own little thing. No, I'm just, you know, I'm just reemphasizing. <laughs> I'm just reemphasizing. I got that. We like it. We like it. Can I show uh, my Can I show my model with the dollars flying around? Or just yes, I love it. <laughs> see it now, or you want to wait till tomorrow? I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. We'll do it tomorrow. Wow! Uh, wow, Trisha, look at this. Two days in a row. Holy cow! Holy cow! This she must awesome. be really interested in annual planning. Well, knowing her, she's probably planning how she's gonna like dominate the planet. So like, gotta have good annual plans. She's attributing this to her high S. Is that is that correct? Is that the way that would work, Liz? Well, her what she means is because she's done two things in a row, you know, following a schedule, you know. <laughs> That's what she's talking about, her steadiness. So mm. The, the highest her S has ever shown through. I think her point is she does not like to do things on any type of a schedule like that. She prefers to go with the flow. Okay. Well, I'm down with that. Yeah. Um, Me too. Yesterday, we were talking, uh, I guess, about strategy. And this was one of the slides that, 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 uh, Liz, you uh, shared as part of your methodology, uh, mm -hmm. create uh, the top goals. Let's go over that real quick. What is What do we mean by that? Sure. So I uh, so take that as a compliment. Oh, she said, uh, Trisha is saying that we should take it as a compliment that she showed up here for us twice. We do, Trisha. We actually absolutely do, actually. Um, uh, okay, so uh, by the way, I love your dark hair. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that I would love it. I would have thought I'd like your light hair, but it's really cute on you. 
Um, okay, the top goals, what I mean by that are the top line goals. So that big, biggest goal that you want to get to for the year, the thing that is driving you. And, and based on what you said yesterday, Tom, which I really loved, um, that thing that has been driving you throughout the course of being with your company, you know, what is, what is your vision? What is the, what's your passion? How, whatever it is that gets you going in the morning. So the big thing for the year that you really want to get done um, and, and create that before you start sharing everything else and get people to help you with um, everything. Otherwise, it's hard to get that direction and focus. People are just all over the board. They need like the anchor, the anchor of the, the top thing that we want to get done. And then I need you guys to help me get there. That's what I mean by the top goal. Okay. And can the you, top goal it could be the bottom goal, depending on how you set up your, your annual planning tool. So in the communicate and align, basically, if you don't set the expectations within your organization, you've got a great plan, you know, that never gets executed. And I guess focus is part of, of execution and action is part of execution and measuring the results is certainly a big part of it because if you're not measuring it, you're not managing it, you don't even have a goal really if you aren't able to hang a number on it then measure your your, your outcomes. Um, Absolutely. I think that we've all been through planning processes and I bet we've all put together a plan that we felt pretty good about and I bet we've all have had days turn into weeks, turn into months, turn into a year or more and we go back and we found out that nothing much ever happened with that, that plan. Sure. I've been, been there. Been there. Been. So was it a bad plan that led to that? Typically not. You can execute a bad plan and look back and say, I mean, I didn't get the results that I wanted, but I did what it was I said I was going to do. It's, it's the whole execution thing, right? Yeah, Absolutely. So I guess really that's kind of what, what, what you guys focus on, on on the MMA because, you know, I guess a, a corollary to execution is accountability. If you're accountable to something, you're, 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 you're more inclined to, to execute it. But uh, what I pulled up here, let me back up a little bit. This guy here, Jim Alampe, he's a, uh, I like to call him a friend. He's an acquaintance. I know him. Um, he wrote a book. It's this book here. You can get this book on Amazon, by the way. Um, I'll pull so that. You up. would call him a friend, but he would call you a stalker, is what you're saying, stalker, right? Tom? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. He actually, he actually uh, spent some time with us a few years ago for cleaning business today and helped us put a piece together in terms of how to overcome um, barriers to growth. And there's a article out there somewhere to that. Maybe I can find that too. But what I, I don't think if you could pull that up, that's very on topic right now. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Here we go. So, is it just Kindle now? All formats. So you can buy the book for paperback sixteen bucks. Hmm. I'll take. Do they have a? They don't have a. A listening version, an audible version, huh? Uh, doesn't look that way. No. But the cool thing about it is. It is very bite-sized. It's got like 55 chapters in it. It's got like 157 pages. Oh, tiny little chapters. So do the math. You know, if you're not wired to just sit down and read something hours on in, it's very easy. And some of us as, as, as business owners tend to get distracted easy and it's hard to... Don't do a deep dive for a period of time. 
this is very digestible in very small pieces. And it basically the whole the whole point is, you know, plans are great, but it's about the execution. A mediocre plan to execute is going to get you a lot further than an excellent plan that never gets off the shelf. And he borrows a lot of basically he kind of you remember in school they had these things called cliff notes that would take a big book and kind of boil it down into something really skinny that if you didn't want to read the the, the, the real thing and you you know get enough out of it to to to, to get by. I um, still love those summaries of books too and yeah. I mean there's an app out there. Was it Blinkist? That, that, yeah. that, 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 that. I was just gonna say I'm 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 in a group. <laughs> that's that's the thing, Blinkist. I'm going to go to cleaning business today and I'm going to go to our resource page. And we haven't looked at this in a bit, but wham, at the very top, uh, Jim Alampi Execution Roadmap. And I'm going to open that up. You know, Alampi's thing might even be here, the other article. See, look, I'm getting distracted. Yeah, now, you are. But you're pulling up the roadmap for everybody, right? Bang. All right. And you see, he even gives credit to uh, Jim Collins, Vern Harish, and Patrick Lencioni. So um, he's drawing upon their works to put together this one piece of paper to put your, he calls it an execution roadmap, but really what it is, it's a, it's a, it, it's a plan with some extra goodies here on the back to kind of coach you to actually implement and do your plan. And if you have ever gone through the process of putting together a plan and haven't executed it, this is uh, a book that you're, 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 you're going to find helpful. Okay, awesome. So yeah, I, I like this. And it, it's kind of, it's kind of a cheat sheet that, you know, some of the stuff once you kind of do go through it the first time, you can kind of revise it from 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 year to year. I mean, you start off with your core values over here on the uh, on the left hand side, um, purpose, mission. I guess that's kind of a variation of 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 a vision and and mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Liz, I know you do a lot of work with core values. Um, you have any yeah. idea or any, any perspective as to why you'd want to start with that uh, as you're, you're going through the process of putting together your annual plan? Well, I mean, I think the, the term itself tells you why, because the core values, that's, that's what's going to be at the center at, of everything. And so everything needs to come off of that core. Uh, if you, I mean, it makes perfect sense to me that if you have things that are not coming off the core that are not in alignment, they're like off and in, in right field somewhere, then it's not going to, uh, if it's not in alignment, it's not going to speak to you and it's not going to get done. It's hard enough to get stuff done that speaks to us, that we feel passionate about, that we really believe in, that we can really get behind the ideas of. If if it's not in alignment with the core values, I just don't even see how things are going to get done. I mean, they're and they're just going to end up being tasky things that fall away and have no meaning anyway. It's my thinking. So having that right in front of you gives you perspective when you're starting to flesh out more details of your your your, your plan. It would like guide you to what fits and what doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. And help you to choose, narrow it down. So a lot of, a lot of the things that um, these these small tools, like the SWOT analysis, I love that that's on there as well. Um, your purpose and mission, vision, mission, all of those things are uh, out there and are useful for whittling down the huge list of possible things to do. You know, how, how do you decide what to do? Well, is it in alignment with the core values? Is it going to get us to where we want to go? Is it what who we want to be and what we want to stand for? Is it using the SWOT analysis? Can we really use our strengths to get there faster? Is Are these things 
in alignment with that? Are we addressing those weaknesses that we have? So, I mean, I think all of these tools, the reason why he's put all of these different things together is because all of them are going to contribute to, so I don't, what, what your overall plan is going to be. I don't remember about these anchors, strategic anchors. Help me out with those, Tom. Sandbox. Those are the things that your business does that any one of them in and of itself might not be unique, but when you put them together, kind of creates, you know, your unique, you know, value proposition. Okay. Um, for example, like Southwest Airlines, okay? Uh -huh. you know, they're known for low cost, on time, good service, and any one of those by themselves is just, okay, well, you can do that. But when you put them all together, that's kind of, you know. Or the magic their, is. Their, their secret, secret sauce. Right, okay, that makes sense. All right, so this is not just a quick, fill it out real quick, put your answers down, and then move forward. This is, no, it, it is a very strategic document yeah, we're working on here. It takes some thought and, you know, if you, it's a good, you know, it's a good idea, you know, if you've got, you know, key people in your organization that that, that can participate, you know, in this process, mm -hmm. that, 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 you know, you can get some, some awesome insight that way. The hedgehog process, I mean, this is the Jim, you know, part of the whole Jim Collins, you know, good, good to great. Yep. And uh, I guess the core of that really is to kind of figure out what to say no to when things, there's three, three parts of the hedgehog. You know, what are you passionate about? Um, what, you know, can you be the best at? And he talks about economic engine, you know, profit per blank. And, you know, everybody's business might be a little bit different. You know, I've kind of noodled around with that a lot. This whole thing of, we talk about, you know, payroll to revenue or return on human capital or, you know, revenue per labor hour. Those are kind of examples of what can be the economic engine in, in, in a house cleaning business. But if you lay those over and find the intersection of all of those three, when new opportunities come along, you look at those through the lens of what am I passionate about? You know, what can be, you know, what can you know, be the best in the world in? and what's the economic engine. And a lot of times these, you know, shiny objects, you look at it and say, you know what, this doesn't really satisfy any of these basic hedgehog, you know, requirements. So maybe we should put that in the parking lot and not get distracted and get back to executing the plan. Plan. We've already right. laid out. Yeah. It makes really good sense. Uh, BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goal, right? It's, it's, it's goal setting. Their, their version of the wig or just, you know, the, uh, what's the OK, OKR language? Uh, I, I think it's just the main objective. Right. Um, to talk about stretch goals, uh, I, they're talking, you know, 10, 30 years out, you know, what, you know, it, it, in game where, you know, what ultimately, you know, what, uh, you know, what can you accomplish in it? You know, it should be grand, you know, don't, you know, if you don't, if you don't set high goals, you're never going to get there. Right. Yeah. So this is not something though, that is, this is more something that, is uh, closer to dreaming, not not actually a dream because they want it written as as a goal, um, but they want it to be, uh, or him, Jim Collins, he he wants it to be something that is so powerful for you that you feel so good about. It if you could complete this, that it drives you forward, um, but but it, it keeps you on track too so that you don't you don't just start like doing stuff it yeah. keeps you moving in the right direction it's for this big huge awesome thing but it doesn't stop you because it's too big 
because it's far out. Sandbox is just just the sandbox you play in, defined by geographic area, defined by you know your target customer. Um, you know, coming up with the uh, you know who is your who who is your 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 target you know customer, being able to define that and put that into this framework. Um, product and services that we provide. What do we call that target customer when you create a a silhouette of something? That's what I'm trying to think. What is that called? Yeah, when we create a <laughs> what is it? It's killing me right now. It's, Somebody, it's, one of you guys got has to know what it is. The faceless silhouette with the whole definition of yeah, avatar. The, thank you. Yeah, it's killing me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So basically, that's uh, who is your avatar there for your customer oh. and for your employees, right? I really like to have both. Value proposition, um, unique value proposition. What? Uh, and I guess that really kind of kind of ties in a little bit to your uh, strategic anchors. Um, what uh, What makes you unique? Uh, brand promise, which is. Mm -hmm. What is an example? You know, Mercedes Benz. You know, they talk about excellence. That's kind of their 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 brand promise. What's the very short, you know, emotional feeling that your 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 clients or your 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 market uh, you want them to have when they think of think of your company when they see your logo and they see your company name? We um, talked about SWOT a couple of times this week already, right? Yeah. Um, we did. We went into so, a little bit of depth with it. With oh, not this week, uh, last week with Alonzo. Okay. So strength, weakness, opportunity, threat, and he puts in parentheses internal and external. That's important because it's easy to get confused on this. What is your company? Areas that your your company is strong in. Areas that your company is weak in. And then the other two, the opportunity and threats are external. Like in the market that you serve, what are the opportunities and what are the threats? Yeah, that's really good. I'm glad that you clarified that, Tom, because we have seen and I, I personally have done it where I get tied up in my own little shoelaces of opportunities. <laughs> Maybe I have a certain group of people working for me or something like that. So I'm glad you put that on there. Or so, I, got, I guess I'm glad. Yeah. This exercise can take a while, by the way. But the first time you do it, it's going to take longer. But it's uh, cool to break it out, you know, year after year and dust it off a little bit. And it goes a little bit faster. And the second page of this is, you know, basically identifying, you know, metrics. I guess you would call it key performance indicators. Um, you know, what are what are what are the what are the major numbers that you're driving, and you know, what are the focus areas within your 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 your, your business. Um, and these are processes that, that you're going to be focusing on to drive these metrics. And they even want you to go out, you know, the next three years, what you're going to be working on, and take a subset of that and break it down into year one. And then take year one, in this case, 2021, and identify priorities. And this is really kind of getting into... A little bit again, what you guys do in MMA, isn't it? You yep. call these, um, you, you, are these objectives? What, what, what terminology you guys no. use? No, actually for for the quarter, we also call, talk in terms of priorities. Okay. Um, these are the things that you have to get done for the quarter. What, what are your plan? And then within that is where we come up with our different lead and lag measures. Right, our our lead activities and our lag measures. But you know what? This is kind of 
and you do it, you know, from quarter to quarter. And there's nothing saying that this is written in, 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 in stone either. I mean, absolutely. Sitting here today, you're going to start off quarter one with, you know, some priorities. But by the time you get to quarter two, whatever you wrote down for quarter two and quarter three and quarter four, you might decide that you want to change those. And yep. from where I'm setting, all this stuff is good, but don't overthink this. Don't beat yourself up because you can spend a lifetime trying to figure out, you know, the SWOT and analysis. Right. And I go, yeah, just get it. And this is where the rubber meets the road right here. The first quarter priorities, even if, you know, even if, even if you look back on it and say they aren't awesome, if you did it, you're developing a muscle, you're developing a habit that will, you know, you'll get better as time goes on is, 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 is the point doing, doing and, and something. Go even a step. Oh, sorry, Tom, go ahead. I thought you were done. No, just doing something is better than, than doing nothing. That's <laughs> what Absolutely. it comes down to. Absolutely. I, and, you know, I'm a really good example of that. Um, Tom, you know very well that I can't think three years out. If I had to fill this in in order and I had to start with three years out, I'm already stopped. I'm roadblocked yep. at that three year thing. So I can't let that roadblock. I have to go on to the one year. Now, I do know other people. I was talking with somebody today who can't think this way at all. Can't think backwards from three years down to one year, breaking it down into quarters, breaking it down into months, bringing it, breaking it down into weeks. But he still has to have a plan because if he doesn't have a plan, uh, then what he'll find is he'll just keep working in his business. He actually works it the opposite way. He works his plan by what's he going to do this week? And then he can see that how that's going to turn into the month and he can see how that's going to turn into the quarter. And he writes all, all of it down moving that way. And then he can see how those quarters turn into the year. And now he's got his year written down. It might look like he started at the year and broke it down, but he didn't. He started with, what am I doing this week? And how am I going to grow that into how, what am I going to do next week? And the, for these four weeks that will turn into a month and then into a quarter. So my thinking is both of those ways works. And if you have a different way that works just as well, great. As long as you get this stuff written down in a way that you have a few things captured. It's in the, um, oh, she doesn't know where the resources are, Tom, because she hasn't been on here before. Tom will put a link in, Trisha, for the resources, and it'll be right at the top. And you'll be able to get it. And there's a ton of stuff in there. I'm going to go to cleaning business. You might want to look at, Trisha, a lot of good stuff in this, on this resource page. And you just type in smart business move resources and it goes to this page. And there's a ton of stuff here that we've collected over time. But the very top one is this execution roadmap. And I'll take the link here and paste it in the chat. That's great. Thanks, Tom. There you go. So there's the exact one. But definitely go to the resource page if you haven't been there anybody that hasn't been there because there is a ton of good stuff in there i'll take the uh, uh, link to the resource page and drop I was it say something else that was really important oh okay awesome great thanks what were you uh, so say the other thing that i wanted to say about your plan uh, about the plan is maybe this doesn't work for you either. Maybe this um, uh, style doesn't work for you. Maybe you need more detail or maybe you need something that looks more like a, like a word cloud where things are more on the page and not so linear. Um, that's fine too. Remember yesterday I showed you quick, easy way to find any of these th tools. Just Google, right? Just business planning or annual planning, you can find it. Um, one that will speak to you and then start there. 
the the main thing to remember is don't let yourself get roadblocked. Don't let yourself get stopped because you don't understand. It's too hard. You don't have the answer to this question. Either find another plan or skip it. Skip that thing and go on to the next thing. That's okay. You don't have to get it right. You don't have to get it perfect. It does not. There is no perfect, right, exact way. There are many, 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 many companies, big companies with people getting paid lots of money that have these filled out perfectly and never do a thing, never make it happen. So that's not the key piece. The key piece on advertising one for me to plan 2021. Uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of people working on that right now too for marketing and advertising. Just today, somebody in the MMA group asked, it said she was sharing hers and asked for anybody else to share theirs. It's very common right now. Big thing that people are doing. And it's super smart, right? Start start figuring out where you're going to be spending your ad money for next year. What are you going to be working on? And for some people, it might make sense to start with where they're going to spend their ad money and start building their plan out from there. But that's not enough in and of itself, right? Other people are going to figure out where do they want to be and what money is it going to take to get them there? So it just, again, depends. The main thing is take action on those things. So you do have to have the goals written somewhere so that, because we talked yesterday, because there's a lot of, of research to that says you will be more successful if it's written down somewhere. Also, another piece that not a lot of people talk about, but there's also a lot of research about, is have it written in two ways. Have it written in numbers and have it written in words. Um, one or the other can help you, but both is even, even better. So have it written down and then don't forget the action piece. How are you going to take action on these things? Uh, don't Don't let it turn into taking action for action's sake. How is your how are your actions going to be tied to the goals? That's why you have to have the goal written down so that you can check and make sure that they are um, tied in there. What you got here, Tom? This is some of uh, the other stuff on, on Alampi's website. I'm going to drop this in chat as well. Um, Rockefeller habits is part of of what he builds into you know his um I guess approach and I love Rockefeller habits. Well, for that gets you into that gets into cadence and you know the discipline of you know daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, you know, meetings and the nature of them and implementation ain't I don't know rock. What do I do with it? I'm guessing this gets into rocker Rockefeller habits a little bit. Just that you can't see any links. I wonder which page she's on. I wonder where uh, she's looking at everything, but on all the pages. Trisha, what what page are you on? Your what Facebook page are you on? Her group. I see it. I see it everywhere. Yeah, yeah. page or group. Where are you seeing this Facebook live? Yeah, this. Um, um, I really took a lot of what we do and our different companies from from this book from uh mastering the rockefeller habits it's a great mm -hmm. book um a lot about meetings too is in here pop says cleaning profit builders so she's in the cleaning profit builders group or page go in there that's that's interesting i don't know if these links show up on the groups or not it may have to be in a page I don't know. Tom Stewart is live now in, it says in Cleaning Profit Builder, so she is in a group. 
because otherwise it would say on the cleaning product builders page. So it looks like but it it's not focusing or it's not. Huh. Um, go, go to, um, I wonder if that's the easiest way. Page hey. would work or cleaning business today page. Any of the pages, I guess, the, I guess the links aren't going through in the groups. Yeah. Dang it. Good to know. We didn't know that that was happening. Thanks for that. It's helpful. Mm, all right. So, yeah, you, you want to get on a page, Tricia, so that you can see all of the stuff that Tom has and everybody, anybody that is on in a group. If you're not seeing all of these links, Tom's posting a ton of links here. Um, I'm on the cleaning business today page. I'm, a, I'm in the group and da, 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 I see the I see the discussion, but the links aren't there. Interesting. Yeah, that's what she's doing. Yeah, I see where Tricia is. I wonder why the links, you know, I'll bet yeah, I could just drop them straight in though. I'm smart enough to do that. All right, coming to you. Oh, she sees them on the cleaning business today page. Okay, good. Yeah, I can drop them into the group, so I'll, I'll do that too, just because it's kind of. But um, actually, setting goals, setting priorities at a quarterly basis. I mean, Rockefeller habits. Um, a lot of different people who are CEOs that run successful businesses will say that that's kind of the sweet spot that not to say that, you know, you can't break it down, but it's that it's that 13 week period that is, it's not so long that you have the luxury of procrastinating, but it's not so, I mean, you can get, you can get some real work done in 13 weeks, right? So the quarterly goals is is kind of the heart of actually getting stuff done. We've talked about like GSB, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, um, I, the the big problem that I see with people that only do quarterly though and don't do annual, don't do monthly, is they get off track halfway through, halfway through the quarter. So in February, they're like having to, if nobody points it out, <laughs> like me, <laughs> the accountability group, then they will be off on another tangent doing stuff that they saw that was really cool on Facebook or somebody else told them their friend is doing and they will be off track. So my experience is you need to have it written down so that you can check, check in. Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Um, absolutely quarterly is critical because people that don't have the quarterly in there, not making it happen. Yearly is too far out. Then you start working in the whirlwind. So part of what um, 4DX teaches is that if you are actively needed in your business, that you want to really push for no more than 80% whirlwind activity and 20% growth activity. And so I, I push that really hard because most of the people that we work with um, are still actively working in their business to some degree. And so no more than 80% whirlwind and 20% needs to be growth. And it's easy to feel like you're doing a growth activity when you're not. Uh, some examples, uh, we will have, I'll have somebody say they'll put down for, um, a growth activity, uh, price increases. Sorry, y'all price increases whirlwind. That's something you got to be doing as part of your regular operating. That has to be baked into your company that your price increases are done on a, and I'm sorry to say this, Trisha. Well, luckily you have Iris, <laughs> but it has to be done systematically. And I don't care what your system is. Come up with what you want. You want to do it monthly? Great. You want to do it every six months? Great. You want to do it every year? Great. But it needs to be hardwired into your company so that it's happening. That's why I love the, the new thing in Made Central, Tom. 
I love that it's just like, bing. Yes, I want price increases to go out, please. Yeah. Did I send you that link today, Tom? Side note. Sorry, y'all. There aren't a lot of people on here, so I don't feel too bad. But did you get that um, I did. message? I did. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, Katie was super excited. Five she's brands awesome. she's adding. To her. Oh, sorry, Katie. Probably shouldn't have said that. Whoops. But it, well, yeah. nobody knows who that Katie person oh. is. Thanks, Yeah, you know, you know, you know, it's kind of like you know, processing payroll is not a pro. I mean, it, it has to happen, but you're not uh, nope. working on your business. You're working in your business. And it can feel like it is a growth activity because it's something you don't do very often. You know, so it's like, well, I have to do this thing now and I don't normally do this thing. So it feels like it is, but it's not. That's why you need to have it written down. You aren't going to find price increases anywhere in your quarterly plan, right? On your annual plan, unless you weren't doing them before. If you've never done price increases, yes, now that makes really good sense to have them on here. They haven't been part of your, your regular baked in work, then absolutely you want to get them in there. One of the other things on Alampi's site, which is pretty cool, is he's got a leadership assessment. And I mean, it's a, it's a squeeze page. They're going to capture some of your, um, you know, contact information. You'll get on his, his email list by doing it. There's a series of questions that they ask you that gives you some perspective on your leadership style and um, how you're doing and opportunities for improvement. Nice. And opportunity then for to try to sell you more services, which... You know, you can't. Being on his uh, email list is pretty cool, though, because you get information that you'll find useful. And we like I, what I do with all of these. So if you guys are any of you are like me and you like to do all of these things and get all of this information and sign up for all of the things, I have this really high theoretical motivator. So I love them all. <laughs> My plan is how I handle that is I go ahead and I sign myself up for it. Um, but I also set up a rule at the same time so that they automatically filter into my education folder so that I don't just see like massive education things coming through my email and get off track. Otherwise, yeah, I would. And I have, oh my gosh, so many times. So, because <laughs> I, I love that stuff. I can't wait to go in and do this leadership assessment, actually, Tom. Did you put the link up? Is that the link right there? <laughs> uh, for the assessment? Yeah, I'll post yeah. it. So that's another example of the assessment we were talking yesterday, uh, different types of assessments so that you can start to figure out uh, where to start, where to go. Uh, that's that's the reason for doing one of these assessments, not just because you like them, but they really can be super helpful. Uh, I think yesterday we talked about, what did we talk about? Traction, doing one in traction. I think we also talked about doing fix this next. I might have even talked about, uh, no, I think that was, that was traction EOS. And so here's another one, right? Here's another assessment that you can do. Oh, I think I might have had one, another one too. But these assessments can be really helpful if you don't know where to start. If you're like, I'm kind of stuck, I don't know what I should have on my annual plan. Um, I don't know how to think that far out. I don't, I don't know where I need to go, what I need to do. Assessment can get your brain jump started in the right spot. We actually had a four-part piece on barriers to growth with uh, Jim Lampe, and the easiest thing to do is just in the search type in Lampe. I'll drop the first piece, but um, really, it's it, 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 it's really good stuff. He's one of my favorite folks. Again, there's the book, and uh, you can find it on Amazon. It's called Great to uh, Excellent. Here's another book that is really useful for annual payroll. Well, I'm sorry? 
Did you with? say great to excellent or great to excellent? You can't hear me? Excellent. With can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. yeah. This book's kind of hard to find. And just, you're lagging a little bit when your volume was, I don't know, a little choppy. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. All right. This guy, his name is Craig Kramers. Um, he uh, used to be the CEO of, of several companies, including uh, like Toro Lawnmowers. Um, the book is kind of like uh, a Lampy's book in the way of a ton of really short uh, chapters, like vignettes, that uh, gets into a lot of the numbers. There's a ton of uh, ways of measuring and motivating and how to put together uh, uh, a one-page business plan and how to communicate and implement. And it even has a, a disc in it that uh, has like a bunch of examples and spreadsheets and, and, and templates. Um, you can find that book. Here's a picture of Craig, by the way. Um, here's the book. I don't think it's in print anymore, but you can buy, still buy it for like 34 bucks. But it, oh, here's the deal with Craig. Uh, he died a few years ago. I think 2014, actually. It was longer than, than, than what I remember. He's uh used to be a Vistu speaker as well. I, 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 I knew him and met him several times. And he's really, um, this is an awesome book. This is one of my favorites. And what has hap appears to have happened, though, that uh, this dude here, who I don't know, seems to have bought all of Craig's inner you know, intellectual material and kind of came out with a new version of the book and he put his name on it as well. Um, it's easier to find than the original version. I haven't seen the new version yet, but. Um, Who else do you have on there? Jim Canfield, right? Look like. Yeah, Jim is the guy, this guy here, Jim Canfield. Oh, it's him bought out basically bought the intellectual property from from uh craig's estate gotcha rebranded the book put his name on it he may have added to it i may he made him may have made a good book you know even better i don't know i've never seen that version it's rare that people make it worse so i'm thinking it's probably a still a good little investment there also for those of you that are interested for any of you that like to get your books from the library great to excellent is at the library i get i i get a lot of my books on my phone at the library and so that's good for me i like free i'm dropping the link to ceo tools 2.0 they got an auto audible audio version of it as well a lot of there's a lot of charts and graphs and numbers and things like that in here though i'm not sure usually when i get an audiobook and it has um charts graphs that kind of stuff they give you a link to a website that you can go get it yeah i i've never seen it where they didn't do that have you tom no i haven't trouble yeah. is I'm out running or driving or doing something yeah. when it's like, you know, it's. You know what happens? This is what happens to me. I'm listening to it. I'm like, great. I'm so glad they gave me the links. I go, I, I go to the website. I look at the links. Yay. And then I listen to the book and then I'm like, oh my gosh, just be easier to buy the book. And then I go buy the book too. So I almost always with these books, I have both copies. <laughs> I have the one I listen to and the hard copy. Because it just works better. And some things just you can mark up better in a hard copy than you can 
on the Kindle or on the phone, you know, the, the uh, bookmarks are not as good as in a hard copy a lot of times. But the cool part about this book is it's got a lot of short chapters that are telling you, giving you tools on how to do stuff. And it's, uh, it's not theoretical and it's just stuff where once you look at it, say, heck yeah, I can, you know, use this to do a long list of things that you will be a better CEO. This gives you the tools to insight to do stuff, especially if you're not really um, big on the numbers that, I mean, I that from a KPI standpoint, he explains a ton of stuff. A lot of the stuff or, you know, a good bit of the stuff that I share and do on my stuff, this is the genesis of it. This is this is one of my favorites. A lot well, of the, a I lot just of, bought it. So a lot of the KPI videos. Like if you go to Cleaning Business Today and you type in KPI, you know, like we've got a long library of, of KPI videos that we did over the years. A number of these, the actual methodology came came from this. So there you go. Those are the you got the got the pro tip here. Yay. Um wow. I'm wondering what everybody else on here is doing. Has anybody started working on your annual plan? If so, what are you doing? What what are you using? Do you have any tools that that you enjoy that you like or you know how's how's it working for you? I'd love to hear about that. What kind of problems are you running into if you're running into any? Love to hear about it. And, and the whole workflow, the whole process, again, you know, the plan really isn't the end of anything. That's just the beginning, right? Yeah, absolutely. So what are you going to do with it? Yeah. How are you going to communicate? How are you going to set expectations? How are you going to measure progress? How are you going to, you know, adjust and recast. How are and really, you? That, that's super important too, Tom, that I don't think enough people think about and talk about uh, when you find yourself off track or not meeting the goals uh, in the way that you thought for whatever reason, maybe COVID hit, right? But you, you haven't met whatever goals you had hoped for. It's you have to recast. That's part of the process. That's not a pro part of failure. That's a part of success. When you are, are looking at it again and recasting the vision and recasting your goals, yes, good. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Nobody just takes it and says, okay, this is what I'm doing and I'm going to stick by this plan exactly perfectly and everything's going to go exactly the way I want. That's not reality, y'all. That's not the way it works for anyone. If these big, fancy, schmancy companies can't make it happen, we're not going to be able to make it happen either. You know, we all are are on that same that same path. So, and sometimes you basically hit a wall, you hit a dead end, and you yeah. need to, you know, change the plan in a big way. And you know, we 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 refer to that as tuition, and you know. If you actually take what you learn from the tuition you paid and applied it to, you know, continue to move forward, then it was money well spent. It was a, it was, it was a good experience. It was a good investment. It's only when you fail to uh, use the lessons that you pay for to get better is, 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 is where it's a loss. Yeah, if you keep making those same mistakes over and over again and not learning the lesson, yeah, you know what they say, right? Kind of serves you right then at that at that point. You got to learn the lesson and then move forward, make some changes. But that stuff happens to all of us. Every single one of us uh, gets kicked back, finds ourselves off track, um, has to re, we all have to, you know, re revisit what we had planned sometimes i'll go back and look at what i had written if i wait too long sometimes i'm like what 
Actually, you guys saw me do it yesterday. You guys saw me do it yesterday with my VTO. Right? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Tom said, looks like you filled that in. I was like, yeah, I don't remember doing that. What do you all think? I think I might have waited a little too long to look at that again. Was it useful? Not really. That was a wasted exercise for me. Didn't, didn't, didn't fit my style. Oh my gosh, Tom, here we are. Top of the hour. If you haven't subscribed to Cleaning Business Today, it's really easy. Go to cleaningbusinessdaycom Email, first name, last name. Get the newsletter that comes out every Thursday. So the new newsletter is coming out tomorrow. Um, typically, the schedule for next week's Smart Business Moves is in that uh, you know newsletter that goes out Thursday. Um, you're going to see an announcement that Smart Business Moves is uh, going to give us all a break for Christmas. So we're not going to be here next week. But not yet. Still going to be here tomorrow. We're going to be here tomorrow. We're going to be doing KPIs tomorrow. We're going to be talking about profit. We're going to talk more specifically about how are we going to, what are the things that we can do within our businesses to lower the payroll to revenue, lower the cost of goods sold. And the list is long. Yeah. Um, and again, our resource page, forward slash smart business moves. I'll uh, drop this in the chat as well. Okay, guys, take care. If you want to do a deep dive back into profit, and more specifically, how to how to get the cost of goods sold down, how to lower uh, payroll to revenue, be here tomorrow, at five o'clock Eastern, because that's what we're doing. Till then, have a good rest of your day. Bye bye.